Hey friends, welcome back to another monologue episode of Thriving Thoughts. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. Today, we're gonna answer the question, how and when do I share with my friend that they hurt my feelings? So we've got some ground to cover today. I'm gonna start with the very first Thriving Thoughts premise. Right after I ask you, please follow me on Instagram at dr.sherryspeaks. I provide additional valuable content over there, including videos and pictures and quotes that you don't want to miss, that I want you to be sure you have full access to all of the free resources that I provide to you through this thriving thoughts empire, as it were. (laughs) It's not really an empire. Anyway, how and when do we share that our feelings have been hurt? Here's the number one truth that you need to know. Nobody has the power to hurt your feelings. If you believe that your friend has hurt your feelings, what you are experiencing instead, if I can invite you away from that emotional roller coaster for a second, is dashed expectations. That means that you had expectations that your friend would respond in a certain way, would do something that you thought that they would do, would say something, or conversely, not say something or not do something. And your expectations weren't met. In other words, the person didn't do what you thought that they were going to do. So that's the truth of the matter. They didn't do what you thought they were going to do. Here's slippery slope going to hurt my feelings is taking that action or inaction personally. You've heard me say multiple times, if you've listened to me for any length of time, everything somebody says and does tells you who they are, not who you are. Remember, we're all at different places in our lives and sometimes we do things because, I don't know, we just had a bad day. Or sometimes we do things because it meets a need of our own. Sometimes we're so egotistical that we think other people's behavior or non-lack of behavior is about us. It's like that movie, it's just not about you. And even if it is about you, it still speaks more about them. I am not talking here about expressed expectations, or expressed needs. I am talking about desired, unspoken expectations in friendship. You guys know I talk about the little lies and the big truths because the little lies that we believe, they turn into big truths and they take over. So if you believe that your friend should respond in a certain way, if you're believing those shoulds, that they should respond in a certain way, that they should do something, that they should reach out to you if you're going through a hard time, you are going to be disappointed nearly every time. The risk of not being disappointed is pure chance, really, because we're not mind readers. And guess what? Your friend isn't a mind reader either. They don't know what you need. Now, that's an unspoken expectation, a desired expectation. I am not talking here about expressed needs, but I will say this, because I know women and I know you well. Too often, We think if I would do something for somebody, then it would make sense that they would do that for me and I wouldn't have to tell them, right? What's the big deal about telling somebody what you need? There's nothing embarrassing about it. In fact, you're more likely to get what you want if you tell somebody what you want, right? Like Christmas present, if you tell somebody you want, oh, whatever you want to get me, whatever's fine. And then you end up with some ugly sweater that you can't stand. Your fault. Say what you need mean what you say, and follow up. But typically, our feelings aren't hurt by somebody else. They're hurt because we have an interpretation of those unmet expectations that we personalize and make about us. So this is the foundation. I promise I'm going to get to, I did not trick you guys fully. I promise I'm going to get to the truth of how you talk to a friend when you are having feelings or when you're in a certain way, as some people like to say, I was in a way. So if you have set in your mind that somebody should have done something, that your friend should have done something that they didn't do, or conversely, should not have done something that they should have done, you are setting yourself up to have hurt feelings because you are believing upon and relying upon an expectation that is unspoken and therefore impossible to meet unless your friend is a genie or a magician. I don't know any of those. I want you to think about the last time your feelings were hurt in your friendship. There's typically a gap between the behavior that happened with the other person and your feelings. And I'm going to fill in that gap by moving my two fists here 
someone's behavior, your feelings. That's right. Everything that happens up here in between the space of those two ears is called interpretation and judgment. And let me tell you, I know we can get carried away up there, have entire conversations with ourselves, with nobody else present to defend themselves. We can come to conclusions that are preposterous, but to us, they make sense. And ultimately, we interpret somebody else's behavior as about us. So I want to liberate you from that, that somebody else's behavior is not about you. It's about them. Even if they did something mean to you or said something mean to you. This, I'm specifically talking about friends. You know who your friends are. This is not an episode to figure out who your friends are. I'm talking to you about you and your friend, who you already know is your friend. If you didn't listen to the last episode that, hey, if you need to redefine who that person is to you, are they a friend? Are they an acquaintance? Are they a colleague? Are they a mentor or a mentee? Go back and listen to last Friday's monologue episode. Right now, this is for you, knowing you've identified your friend and you've found yourself with hurt feelings. Listen, I promised that this season was going to be filled with applicable tools for you to grow, flourish, and prosper, not for you to grow, flourish, and prosper your friend, right? Got to start with you first, and that means identifying what you're interpreting, what you're taking personally, what's happening in the space between your friend's behavior and your hurt feelings. We're going to dive into that later at another on another episode, but for today's episode, let's talk about when you would share the fact that you have hurt feelings. Now, you might say, well, if my hurt feelings are my own interpretation, why would I even share them? Well, because this is your friend and you want your friend to know you and you want your friend to know your thought processes and you want your friend to be able to call you on your stuff, right? Hopefully, I do anyway. When you would take something to your friend is if you have something you want to share with them about you. When you do not share your hurt feelings with your friends is if you have an ulterior motivation that what you share will somehow influence them to change their behavior in the future. Look, if you want your friend to do something, you can express your needs to them outside of this specific incident in which you feel like your feelings are hurt. That's yet another friendship episode, understanding how to express your needs in friendship. So if your goal is to share something about you, by all means, that is the time to share it. But if your goal is to hope for some kind of change in that other person, it's best to keep your mouth shut. That's not the time to express it. Remember, you are the only person you can control. So if you have something to share about you and what you're learning about you, you could say, man, I learned that I have entire conversations in my head and I made this stuff up. And your friend would probably say, oh my gosh, me too. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's just going to bond you guys closer together. That brings us to the how do you share? You just share. You don't sugarcoat stuff. You don't try to figure out a way to say something that's not going to hurt somebody else's feelings. How many times have you ever said that? I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I don't really want to say anything. Here's the advice I give to everyone, including myself. If you fear that you're going to hurt someone's feelings, which go back and listen to the beginning of this podcast episode, because I reassure you now, you cannot hurt somebody else's feelings. Their feelings are up to them. Their response is up to them. But go and say, hey, listen, I have something I want to share with you. And it might not come out the wrong way. I might make a mistake when I say it. I might fumble my way through it, but I just wanted to share because I'm learning some things about me. Again, everything that I just said in that example, it's about me. It's not about the other person. It's not, hey, I want to talk to you about something you did. If you want to put somebody on the defensive, open a conversation like that. Let's talk about something you did. Keep your focus on you. If your motivation is to share your feeling, your thinking, your doing, feeling, thinking process, your thriving thought world process with your friends so that they know you better and can bond more intimately with you and not so that they change. That's when you know it's okay to share. And two, how? Just say it and make it about you. I know that today's podcast episode has given you some food for thought, some food for thriving thought, my friends. And I do hope that you share this episode with a friend, that you also highlight your biggest takeaway from it on your Instagram story and tag me at Dr. Speaks, as well as use the hashtag thriving thoughts with Dr. Sherry. Thanks for helping me get this message out to more and more people. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of thriving in friendship with your ride or die. Until then, remember to speak truth over the lies. 
and you will thrive in any and every circumstance.